Mm. Yeah, tasty, tasty, tasty. Coming in with uh, some Chance Hayden from Atlanta Records. We are here in East Philadelphia, 21 Soul, broadcasting semi-live from the old train (laughs) station. And uh, we just had a nice, uh, we had a cheesesteak. The train came by. We're heading down the shore in a little bit, as soon as it gets warm enough. And uh, welcome, everybody. (laughs) I think that's it. (laughs) I am Lewis Marks. This is Mr. Fabian Brown. We're here at 21 Soul, trying to spice it up a little bit. 21 Soul. Get it cooking. 21 Soul, the soul of the 21st century. Trying to create some media that is interesting and engaging to people. And uh, bring you some of our music from the rope dope catalog, uh, past, present, and future. Mostly future on this show, I might add. Uh, and talk about the music. Talk directly. We want to reach you... Straight in your living room. I'm doing, How are you, sir? I'm, I'm doing I'm doing good. Today was a, a media day for us, huh? It's a media day, and it's not even done yet. We have we have other things to do. You know, we have podcasts, we have radio shows, we have all kinds of things to put together. Tell me about Chance Hayden. What's this record all about? Yeah, this, this record, it's a, it's a great record here. Coming out, like you said, on Atlanta Records, scheduled for... When's Chance scheduled here for... I don't know, but I'll talk real quickly about how uh, Chance Hayden comes into the into the mix here. Um, Chance is from Portland, Oregon. Yes. And uh, he is associated with Mr. Jared Lawson. Uh, um, many other things that Chance has done, but that's how he has come into our fold, because we have that connection with Atlanta Records to soulandjazz.com in the U.K., uh, my partner in music, Mr. Brian Hurst, Brian uh, Hurst. is you know got his finger on the pulse of these things. Uh, and uh, I also want to say that I want to shout out Mr. Simon Manny from uh, from the UK, who was a big Chance Hayden fan. Really? He was like, hey man, you got to get on this. You got to get on this. You got to get on this. So, so this uh, this album's titled Get Something. Get something. Get some, something. Drop the G's. Got a little apostrophe. <laughs> a little apostrophe up there. You got a killer lineup. You got Chance Hayden on guitar. You got Michael Eason on keyboards, acoustic piano. Uh, Damon, how do you say that last name? Erskine. Erskine on bass. Michael Rayner on drums. You got a whole crew of dynamite musicians here. I see Farnell Newton in there. Yeah, man. He snuck in there yeah. on a couple of tracks. Of course, And Jared, Jared Lawson, Lawson on, on the last track. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's set for release coming out on May 4th, 2008 on Atlanta Records via Ropadope. I dig the album art. Yeah, it's Good great. stuff. It's Good great. stuff. I want everybody to check that out. You can find it on our website. Have you uh, had a chance to talk to Chance? <laughs> have I had have I had the chance? I have talked to Chance quite a bit. Yeah, in preparation for this. Yeah, yeah. My he, he's a man with purpose. Eh? Yeah, mellow. I like I like his uh, his his being his or his vibe, um, really in tune with what he's doing. And the kid can freaking he can wail on that guitar, man. He's doing his thing. I would expect him to be a bass player. Really? Yeah, with that vibe. He's he's just like oh, so, got, he's it, got, got that, it. He's got that chill thing. So we're going to do a little thing right here, and I want to bring up this first track from an album that just came out on rope dope and this is going to be a little choppy. It's going to be a little fun. Let's, let's hear what Mr. Chuck Lichtenberger has to say. So it's time for me to explain myself. But let's let this song drop in for a second.
groove. So we got about five minutes on this track. Uh, we'll hear it in the background. Uh, this is Odd Atlas, a uh, project coming from Warren Walker from Kandinsky Effect. That's correct. correct? Yeah. The but I, I want to explain myself. Um, the Chuck Lichtenberger record yes. is a really interesting record. Um, and I feel like it's the kind of record that is not going to get as much attention as it deserves early on in the process. I think people will look back on this record and go, man, <laughs> what was that? You know, I, I need to dig into that. And the record consists of some really badass playing <clears throat> by, uh, you know, Chuck and by Jonathan Scales, uh, produced by Jonathan Scales, That's sorry. Right. Uh, who also plays Got on Mono it, right? Neon on bass on this album. Uh, Jonathan Skills, like you said, Zach Page on bass, Jacob Rodriguez, Justin Ray, Jonathan Perlman, uh, Shariq Tucker. Shariq Tucker. Man. Jay White on bass. Got a few bass players on this album. It's just uh, a great lineup. So the, so the album is basically incredible players experimenting with uh, Chuck's compositions mm -hmm. and Chuck throws uh, his life story yeah and it's funny like you could listen to this thing and you could say well that's some really quirky interesting stuff but th this is really Chuck expressing himself that's right it's not just like oh we decided that we would throw some quirky stuff in there right and it reminds me of you know I used to there's some really early Ben Folds music oh, good call. that's just like live stuff of Ben Folds expressing himself and I, you know, I think the media likes to pick up on it, and they did at the time of like, oh, this is really, you know, interesting and different and unusual. But that's there. It is different and unusual. But what happens is, it's really a person expressing their particular uh, perspective on the world and trying to transmit their life experience, you know. And Chuck has had some, some interesting life experience. And he really captures things that nobody else wants to say. So what I did here... I like that. ...is I grabbed... He, he has long track, you know, intro, long track, interlude. And the interludes are all named... Uh, not all, but many of them are named by age. Right? So there's... Tracks we're going to play on here that are called 5, 15, 22, right? So he yeah. kind of tells a story from a period of his life yep. where he felt out of place and how, and how uh, insecure he felt at the time or how confident he felt at the time That's right. only to be shattered. <laughs> uh, you know, he's basically like laying out his experience for everyone to hear on the record and I felt like it I, you know it just deserved uh, to be told again right. but what I've done is put those interludes in between some other tracks I dig that just to kind of give it some juxtaposition and you know let it play so we just heard five when he was five years old uh, followed by the Guardian uh, Odd Atlas Odd Atlas and then we're going to go into another one and so that, that album that Chuck is on is uh, This Is What Happens When, dot, 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 released on rope -Dope, April 13th of this year. and uh, Friday the 13th. Yeah, it was Friday the 13th. Yeah. Do you make a wish? Is that what happens on Friday the 13th? <laughs> I make a wish every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that's release day. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the truth right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Friday the 13th is a good day. It's, it's kind of, you know, that 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 kind of sets the tone. Friday the 13th is like that day where you're not really sure if it means anything, but you think it could be sinister, but you also think it could be hopeful. <laughs> and so you just kind of, you know, everybody talks about it. Superstition is, uh, is an interesting thing. You know, it's really funny. I watch a lot of video or, or uh, you know, like some of the new shows that are coming out. Right. And... It seems like all the new shows kind of have that little vibe, you know, like like the horror shows. Like, what do you mean? Uh, you know, I'd be I'd be I'd be challenged to even name one, but uh, I mean, it started with Black Mirror in my mind, uh, and now there are all these shows where, like, you know, reality and 
experience and possibility and right. what is real and what could happen and what does happen are all intermingled. But what is that one that you said? Black, what is it? So it's kind of it's kind of like schizophrenic. Like we're kind of like in this schizophrenic time. That's deep. Yeah, I mean that was that was a crazy bad word, right? But I don't know I don't know if it's not the definition of an experience of multiple things at the same time. Hmm. And here we go with 15. I am 15 years old. I'm at basketball camp. I am tearing this kid up with my hook shot. The other team's coach calls the timeout. I think to myself, I am great. I am probably going to college on a basketball scholarship. I bet girls are going to start liking me soon. <laughs> While I'm playing out this vision of my bright future, my opponent is being taught how to block my hook shot. Players and I do not score for the rest of the game. Later that day, I walk past my recent adversary. He's making out with a girl. <laughs> I think to myself, I hate that guy. I hate the coach that taught that guy how to rob me of my joy. I hate all the girls at this camp. It's almost like my life story. <laughs> For the record, we hate that guy too. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> of course, of course. We hate that guy too, you know. Hopes and dreams uh, and reality. That's what we're talking about. And now we're going to talk about how, you know, just, just translating the same kind of thing to somebody who moves from one place to another, one reality to another. This is, uh, bring it in. Talk about this record. What do we got? We got Dimitri. Dimitri V. Quintet. Because I'm not even going to attempt that last name. Dimitri is a great, great individual, great human being that brings this album. Uh, where is he from? He teaches at, um, what university? I just had the opportunity to, uh, interview, uh, Dimitri. Dimitri? And he goes by Dimitri. He goes by Dimmy. But I think the the full pronunciation is Dmitrye, which is uh, it's it's challenging. And Vasilyevich, Vasilyevich, that's beautiful. Or Vasilyevich, I'm not exactly sure. And my apologies for, uh, you know, if I'm wrong on that. Um, he is from Serbia. Serbia. Trained in the classical tradition in the post-Soviet uh, Russian system. Okay. Uh, and then fell in love with uh, jazz. It's beautiful. Played in Dixieland Orchestra in uh, Belgrade, and then went to Berkeley, and then ended up in New Orleans, uh, teaching at ah, uh, jeez, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, it's in the credits. Yeah, it's in the credits. I it's like in that. the credits. Yeah, we'll put it there. You got uh, you got Robert Brooks on tenor sax. You got Jose Guzman on the electric guitar. Uh, Andre, you gotta help me with this one. Gunclaves, Andre Gunclaves on the upright. Gun, Gunclaves. Gunclaves. Gun no. Gunclaves. I don't know. It's got a little thing on the bottom of it. I don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah. got Andy Wheelock on drums. Uh, it's a great album. Check it out. There's a great, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna release a podcast uh, with each of the artists that release records on Rope It Up. Twenty One Soul is gonna release the, uh, a podcast, and this will be one, uh, and it'll describe. It's a one-on-one interview that I have with uh, with Dimitri, and uh, he can he can describe all that, you know, and uh, we'll we'll look for that. Now, what's the connection? How how does D- Dimitri? end up over here at Rope It Up? Who's, who's the, the common denominator? What is the connecting point? I don't remember. I really don't. I think this is one that just kind of came through the and email. and Get just, out. Yeah, just a random thing. I'm sure he knows people that uh, that are on the label, but, but there's not a particular introduction or anything. Yeah. It's Which, just something that caught my ear. That's beautiful. You know? I think what was... Uh, Compelling was the sensitivity and the of the story of the man. Yeah. Um, you know, there's an emotion in his music that uh, 
It's, you know, I mean, it, uh, Chris Potter has a quote, and I think you can find it there. Uh, Chris Potter says, further up, yeah. <clears throat> Oh. Dimitri's music occupies a unique space somewhere between the classical tradition and jazz. That's true. And so there's a certain drama that hit me with the music. I mean, I you know, one of the first things is like, wow, this this is this is you know, this is jazz. This is traditional jazz. This is real jazz. You know. Right. And here at Rope Dope, sometimes we're we're, <laughs> we're, jazz. we're not jazz. You know. <laughs> um, so we'd love to laugh about that. Uh, um. But there's. There's a feeling. There's a dynamic feeling. There's a sad feeling. There's a there's a worldly feeling that comes through in his music that caught my ear. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if anyone uh, particularly introduced him, but that's what it is. Yeah. I can hear you on the worldly feeling. You know, when I listen to it, um, technique-wise, he's on top of it. You can tell he's classically trained. But that passion and love for the jazz language, you can hear it really strongly in, in the melodies. So um, this one also caught my attention, especially when I had a chance to speak with him. And, um, you know, again, you know, Chris Potter is giving you a shout. That's, that's something to say, I guess, you know. That's just one of the quotes, too. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, very, very uh, uh, acclaimed, you know, and, and respected by uh, many people in the jazz community. Xavier University. That's it. Xavier. <laughs> thank, thank you, Fabian. Comes back around. Yeah. You beat Google to the punch. <laughs> yeah. um, Accidental Nomad, the name of the album, which which really describes uh, where, you know, h- how he arrived here. Um, I don't want to give too much away for the podcast because I'd like people to listen to that. Right. To hear it in his own words, but... Uh, you know, this is a story of how the music kind of took the man, hmm. rather than uh, a person deciding, "I'm, you know, I'm going to go do this." You know, I mean, he learned uh, he learned music, and and uh, it sort of transported him into a different place, I like uh, it. over to Berkeley, down to New Orleans. He did comment on how, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, interesting it is for him to be teaching jazz in New Orleans. And I think Xavier is uh, uh, primarily an African American school. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I'm not even 50 percent sure on that. But something something clicks in my memory that uh, you know. What, 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 why is this person from Serbia uh, teaching? Well, it's, it's jazz, fine. but he, he's obviously very serious about it. When, when I talked to him, you know, he he had mentioned, you know, his his musical journey and how, you know, he got into the education thing because, as you know, as a working musician, sometimes you got to go back on that teaching to, you know, make things make things meet, you know, and, you know, he had this void, he had this emptiness uh, about him, and he wanted to, you know, get back and do some things on the road and put the group together and you know just does you know it's very relatable because a lot of musicians they, they go through that right you know they try mm-hmm. to they're passionate about their art but they always have to do something else to support you know their 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 family you know but here's a guy who you know he's figured it out you know he's figured out a way to, to live both worlds and um, you can hear it expressively in in his music at least I can hear it through his through his melody so um, this album pre-orders coming out on April 20th uh-huh. and uh, the release is on May 18th so Take a look out for that. Yeah, this is one of those records uh, that that's it's just such a beautiful story, but it's also a little bit sad in the sense that it's always a challenge for musicians to earn a living in this world. Sure. And yet, and yet, that's that's kind of the that's kind of the stone, you know, on which you cut your cut your teeth, you know. Right. Like that's 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 the way it goes, you know. Um, it is amazing to me how many people that we are connected with uh, who have different perspectives and, and positive and but always a positive energy about this is the, you know I was chosen to do this right you know it's a higher calling I think you know and what a beautiful man and what beautiful music so I hope everyone will listen to that <clears throat> then we're going to dig back in and this is the this is the danger of of, we'll of of making the whole show about Mr. Chuck Lichtenberger. 
Let's bring it back. You know, <clears throat> there's the, the thing about Chuck, and I, I just, you know, I set this up in order to focus on Chuck, and I don't know if I was even prepared for this, right? And that, and that, <clears throat> what's amazing about it is it's uncomfortable, and it's funny. I mean, you know, the humor comes when your brain doesn't know how to process something, right? <laughs> right? You like might hit an uncomfortable moment, and you're like, "Well, how do I process this?" But you know it, right? We all walk around and we know it. We know that it's challenging for people. Yep. We know that <clears throat> they're, they're, but for the grace of God, go I. In a certain way, you know, when someone comes out and expresses, their just, just lays out. The challenges and the insecurities. Yeah. And that's it. I'm insecure. To say, when has anybody ever said, hey, you know, hi, my name's, hi, I'm Lewis. I'm insecure. <laughs> right. <laughs> when does that happen, you know? And yet, it's so true. And that's one of the things I greatly appreciate about Chuck because... I agree. Uh, he just puts it out there. He sort of, you know, and, and it... <clears throat> what's amazing about music... <clears throat> excuse me, um, is that, and, and having this platform and being able to put a record out is that he gets to say I'm insecure and communicate it to everybody in the world. The, the, the word um, authentic keeps coming up, right? He's, he's transparent. He's real. He's, he's pouring everything it's out. beyond authentic. <laughs> Authentic is kind of like, you know, I have a nice denim jacket. You know? I'm like, you know, and these are the these are the bruises on my hands or the, the, the you know, the calluses from working or something, right? right? This is like super authentic because I think it speaks to all humanity. It's true. We're all scared. We're all nervous. We're, you know, we've all had these things. And you know what? There are going to be people, hopefully you'll comment, that say, bullshit, that doesn't happen to me. I'm calling you on that. I don't agree, you know? And that's, you know, it's an uncomfortable discussion. It's an uncomfortable show, in a sense, to bring it all out. Um, the greatest thing about Chuck and about Jonathan Scales as producer is that they put just incredible music behind it. And, and, and I've brought this to the show tonight for that simple reason, uh, is that there is powerful music behind it. Powerful music. And... Chuck's laying himself out. So, you know, we, we all have to listen to it. I put in nighttime as a thing. Um, Funny story, this this track and, yeah. S- and Sleepyhead are my kid's favorite track off of this album. That's it. That's exactly it. Because Sleepyhead and Nighttime are both the, the those moments where you reconcile with yourself and you go to bed. <laughs> right? We all have them. So how do they feel about the music? How do the kids feel about the music? Well, you know, they're... They're, they're, young, they're right? actually folks on the lyrics. The, well, no. Well, a little bit, you know, I think the hook in Sleepyhead, it brings them to that point where they're focusing on the lyrics, right? And a lot of the stuff is probably way over the head. But I think it's the instrument. Or not. Or not. I'm right. talking about my tw- the seven-year-olds, right? You know, the, the kids. 
and uh, you know, I don't know, man. You know, it's something about the instrumentation. You know, the the vibe of of what the music is. You know, they're bopping around, and it's something about the hook and the lyrics, man. You know, so mm. it's for me, it's a it's a household delight. Put it to you that way. I'm gonna really glad glad you brought that in because you know, do we ever grow up? Is the I real know. question. I don't. Right. Know. You know, he's, he's, he's talking about the kinds of insecurities and emotions that we had as children and how they represent themselves later in life, you know, so. So there it is, the Chuck Lichtenberger episode of it. 21 Soul, and we talked about some serious stuff, and it was awkward and uncomfortable and beautiful, uh, you know. Uh, shout out to Chuck for bringing these things to the forefront. Yeah. Uh, and talking about himself in a beautiful way, you know, and, and bringing that commonality to it. How are we taking this out? This is one you chose. Oh, this is uh, this is uh, Project K Paz, uh, an Infinity Gritty release, Mr. Adam Ahuja. Can I keep turning it up? You can, man. You know, quick quick story about this album, you know, from talking with Adam. They actually recorded this the first time in Brazil. Loved it. They got the, the band together. They loved the way it sounded. And something was incomplete about it. So he had brought that same, you know, uh, that same group, the same band up to New York. Uh, I remember that trip. Yeah, yeah, to record with, um, oh, who is, why am I spacing on the name? Uh... East Scott Linder. So it went to East Scott oh Linder's gosh. recording studio wow. and re-recorded the whole entire album. New songs. New songs. I mean, they were down in Brazil. They recorded videos, the whole entire thing. Loved the vibe. But again, something was... They, they were looking Wasn't for something. Complete. Yeah, something yeah. They were looking for something more. So wow. they, they went to East Scott Linder's uh, uh, studio, uh, who's also another uh, rope dope in print release off of Infinity Degree album mm-hmm. came out mm-hmm. last year. Beautiful record. And, um, Beautiful record. You know, so they re- He's like that, that like, yeah. you know, wizard, you know. He's another one. Quiet genius. So yeah, so that's that's my story about this uh, album, Post Something, you know, which which is Post great. Something. Post Something. Yes. Yeah. Project Pape, Project K Pass coming out, released for, set for May 25th of this year. So we're going out with, with Project K Pass. Sweet. Well, we're going to let it play. Fabian Brown, thank you. Absolutely. Here we are, 21 Soul. I want to ask everybody to subscribe. Our goal is 50,000 subscribers on this channel. And uh, we think we're bringing some good music. Let us know what you think. Thank you. Cheers to you. Watch this, I can...